So I want to welcome everyone and uh, thank you for being here. A lot of activity going on in Las Vegas right now. Big game happening outside on the concourse there. But uh, again, want to uh, introduce our two newest additions to the Sixers family. Um, we embarked on free agency with a, a pretty clear goal, or goals, I should say, of continuing to pro promote the growth of our program. We wanted to promote winning, and we wanted to maintain flexibility. And I think that with these moves, we've done exactly what we set out to do. Um, I do want to say that that's not to think that this is a one-and-done situation for either one of these gentlemen sitting next to me. Um, Promoting flexibility and maintaining that flexibility is just important for where we are as a program, but we look at both of these individuals as key additions to what we're doing with our, our program in terms of, you know, that growth. We wanted to add talent, we wanted to add toughness, we wanted to add leadership, we wanted to add professionalism, and that's effectively what we've done with J.J. Redick and Amir Johnson. I'm going to open up, uh, you know, by having each, you know, say a few things uh, to, uh, you know, address you, and then we'll go into uh, questions and answers. But uh, JJ, why don't you start? Sure, be happy to. Um, I'm just really excited to to be a part of uh, the Sixer family. Um, you know, truthfully, uh, for uh, you know, probably the the eight weeks between the season and free agency, um, as, as we got closer and closer to free agency, um, you know, I, I wanted to be in Philadelphia. Um, that was the, the place I wanted to be. I, I thought it was the best fit. And, uh, and then when the trade happened um, around the draft, it just really solidified, you know, my feelings uh, about where I wanted to be and, uh, and getting to meet with Brian and, and Coach Brown and, and the whole, uh, you know, basically the whole Sixers organization. You brought like 40 people to the meeting. <laughs> um, was just a, was just a great experience, and um, you know, I'm just again, I'm I'm, I'm really excited. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah um, uh, for me, um, just love the process the the Sixers are headed towards, um, building up. Um, love the theme, you know, trust the process, and um, me and BC go way back, you know, in Toronto days. You know, uh, Called them up, talked to them. Um, basically, known BC since I was a rookie. You know those Detroit years, playing out there, and basically coming to Toronto, believing in me, trusting in me, of and uh, signing me to Toronto, going out there playing. And uh, since then, I have grown. And uh, for me to to come here and, and and be with BC again, and and be a part of of the process of this team. You know, uh, I was uh, stoked. I was very excited. You know, and I'm happy to be a part of the family. I know. Um, Philly has a lot of history, and uh, they, they've been building up to be successful. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to to go through the process. So it's uh, you know it's been a lot of time, as Amir mentioned, uh, for us. Uh, I've seen him grow as a young man and develop as a player, and uh, to see how far he's come. And you know, he mentioned today when we were signing the contract, he he came as solo the last time. And, and now he's got a family with him, two young kids and his partner. And just great to see, uh, great to see him grow as an as a individual, but also as a basketball player. And then in, in JJ, when you talk about what this team needed more than anything, uh, was a shooter. We arguably have the best shooter in the league. Uh, and on a team of uh, facilitators and playmakers, and I'm putting some pressure on you, aren't I? <laughs> I love it. Uh, but you know, we've got players that want to distribute the basketball, that want to make plays for other people. And that goes as much as our guard play, you know, with Markel and Ben to, to our bigs. You know, with Joel Embiid, Dario Saric, you know, these guys are playmakers. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a fun brand of basketball. We're going to get up and down the floor. We talk a lot about, you know, the style of play. Defend, pace, and space. I'm going to look for him for most of the defense. I'm going to look for him for most of the spacing. And pace will not be a problem with the, the young legs that we have on our team. But uh, with that, we're going to open it up for questions and uh, very excited to have them join our family. Yeah. 
How you guys doing? Um, JJ, you said, you know, for the eight months or whatever, eight weeks, you wanted to really be a 76er. But what was the one thing that really stood out? I mean, aside from them getting the, you know, the first overall pick. Um, I, told, uh, I told Brett Brown this uh, when we met on July 1st, but the Sixers haven't been very good. And there's something about his disposition, the way he's coached this basketball team, uh, the way he's embraced the process. Uh, the spirit of the Sixers has never been broken. And I think that speaks volumes to Coach Brown. Uh, he's, you know, to be honest, he was probably the biggest factor in this decision. Is, is he someone that I, I've, I've watched and I've wanted to play for? And um, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be playing for him next year. And I, and I think for me personally, uh, that was the biggest thing, just the fit of playing in his system. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the young talent this team has and, and where I fit uh, and sort of complement their talents, uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a great match. For both JJ and Amir, what do you envision your roles being on the team and then what do you want to contribute? Um, definitely a, a vet presence. Um, a lot of uh, being more, a lot vocal, you know, in the locker room. You know, at the same time, you know, just just playing with a lot of grit and playing hard. Um, I told BC this, you know, everybody has you know a lot of expectations for this team, but it definitely it's, it's very hard to win in this league, and it and it and it takes and the only thing we can control is just just playing hard, and it, um and it and it takes time. Like I said, I keep saying this because you know that's the theme. You know, it's a process, and um, once we put all that together. And we get everybody in the rhythm, you know, we can go definitely far. Uh, for me, obviously, uh, shooting and, and spacing and all that. But um, I think the other thing that really excites me is, is just the opportunity um, to be a leader on this team and, and to be around younger guys. Um, I think the, the idea of a, of a change, I guess, in, in that regard uh, was exciting to me. And, um, you know, something that BC and I have talked about, something that Coach Brown and I have talked about already. But there is an expectation and a responsibility on my part uh, to be a leader for this team, um, just as a professional, as a guy who's, uh, you know, been in 11 straight playoffs. Um, you know, I, I, I have a wealth of experience, and, and I'm willing to share that. Steve. JJ, for you, um, obviously in Orlando, you came in with a team that was on the bottom, got to the NBA Finals. Yeah. How much of that experience can you bring to these young guys about finding your way in this league and ultimately being successful? Yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting parallel because I did, um, I was drafted by Orlando as they were sort of rising up. Um, I think they were 36 and 46 the year before I got there. And then, um, you know, we made six playoffs in a row. Um, so, so the, the timing is, is, is very similar. Uh, but I, I just think, you know, f for, for me, uh, I'm going to echo what Amir just said, but winning is really hard in this league. And um, winning and losing can come down to small stuff. And I think you have to master the small details first, um, and then you can, can win games. I think they've been doing that at least from my perspective from the outside, Coach Brown has been doing that. And now I think there's enough talent and hopefully enough uh, veteran leadership that we can get to the playoffs. Brian, what do you think it says about the state of the franchise right now that two players as proven as these two are would be willing to come and join the organization? Well, I think it speaks to uh, just the temperature in the market right now. Uh, people are looking at us as an up-and-coming team, uh, a, a wealth of young talent that uh, is, is on the cusp of something special. Uh, but we've put ourselves in a position, obviously, to have the flexibility to add players like this, uh, but to be considered uh, a positive place and a, and a really exciting destination. I think we've turned the corner in that regard. I said last year we didn't really have the story set yet. I think we're in the middle of building that story even more so and I think that this act today, signing these two types of players, uh, enforces what we're doing. Now we have to speak on the court and uh, that will come in the form of winning. 
you know, taking it from 10 games last year to 28, that's a plus 18. That's something we were proud of, but that's not good enough. Um, and we certainly don't want to race out to the middle. We want to do the right things to continue to build this the right way. And making decisions like this is going to help us make those uh, strides uh, in terms of the growth and development of, of that core group of players that we keep talking about. But uh, the fact that you know JJ and Amir uh, coming from two situations where they were on winning programs and looking for a chance to come to help us do what we're about to do, uh, it's exciting. And I think it's only going to continue to to increase in terms of appeal, uh, both marketing-wise and uh, free agency-wise. Yeah. Uh, Brian, just uh, we see a lot of young teams that do bring in veteran players for leadership to, to show the young guys the way, but so a lot, sometimes we'll see where they're maybe even further along in their careers or really toward the end. How important was it to find not only veteran leaders, but ones that can really contribute on the court to kind of back up whatever they're saying in the locker room as well? Well, that's, that's a critical component. Um, I, I want to acknowledge that uh, we attempted something last year, and I think we were successful with that, with the signings of uh, Sergio Rodriguez and Gerald Henderson in particular, Jared Bayless, who is still with us. Uh, Jared is one of our hardest workers. He's in the gym every day first, and you know he's maniacal about what he does. He sets the example on the court. But you hit it. If you're not playing, it's, it's hard to be that leader. Um, we anticipate not only is Jared Bayless going to have a role this year on the court, but so are these two individuals here, big roles. So um, that's when it can be the most effective, you know, the application of that experience uh, and having a voice and setting the example, but doing so on the court in meaningful minutes. Uh, I think it's really important. Do you have a view on that? Yeah, I would just say Josh and, and Dave and uh, Brian aren't paying me $23 million just to be a leader. I mean, they're, playing, they're, they're paying me that because I can play. And, and same thing with Amir. So um, I, I totally agree with that sentiment. You know, it's, it's great to have those guys in the locker room, on the plane, on the bus that can be leaders and, and take guys aside and, and sort of mentor them. Uh, but the most effective way is guys that can be on the court with you and in the moment, uh, you know, teach you, uh, work with you. That's how you really get better, and that's how you win games. Mm -hmm. Keith? Um, Got the mic. <laughs> Got the mic. I know they're not paying you $23 million just to be a leader, but I want to ask both of you guys a question about leadership, sure. and particularly in your, both of your careers. Like, you know, when you were at Duke, you were the national player of the year. You also was a two-time All-American. And with that comes a lot of high expectations. And on this team, they have a lot of players with high expectations. And talking about you, Amir, in your situation was, you know, you went to Detroit, you were a high school player, and you had to go up against veterans, grown men. And at practice, it was like the leadership that they showed you was basically like, we're gonna go hard at you every day. But at the same time, they took time to tell you what you did wrong. And that enabled you to be in the league for as long as you has, you have. And can you both, both of you guys address your own, you know, your certain situations in regards to what I just said? Start first. Yeah, um, like you said, uh, a young kid going in Detroit, you know, um, 17, 18 years old, and uh, basically stepping into a, a grown man world. You know, everybody on that team was probably 30, 30 and up. And um, it just it just taught me, it taught me a lot, you know I mean? On the court and off the court, just to, just to be a man and, and, and go in the gym, work hard constantly. You know, they always preached in my ear and like the work never stops. And um, I had to basically grow up quick. And for me being on that team made me learn how to be a man and a player fast, and when I finally, my four years there, I was I was mainly just, you know, that that practice player, just learning from those guys, you know, Rasheed Wallace, you know, Ben Wallace, trying to see I can go down the list, and then with BC bringing me into Toronto, I felt like I was on my own now, and I was able to take that knowledge I learned from those guys and be able to to use it in Toronto, and uh, from there on. You know, I was able to grow as a player in person, and and uh, I carry, I, I use it on the court. You know, I'm always vocal. You know, I'm always 
talking, and I got that from Rasheed Wallace, of course. You know, he's always vocal, and uh, that's the main guys I got that from. And, um, you know, um, me being in my 13th year, you know, I just I feel like I, I have a lot to, 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 to give, and um, I definitely will lead by example on the floor and, and have a lot to say to the young guys. Uh, for me, I, you know, I spent four years at Duke, and I was, I think, 22 my rookie year. So for a lot of guys, I was older as a rookie, but I still, um, you know, nothing could really prepare me for, for the NBA and uh, both on the court and off the court. And I was very fortunate to have some great veterans that set the tone for me, even guys that were, you know, similar in age to me, like Jameer Nelson, um, who's still one of my closest friends, you know, those type of guys. Uh, really helped me those first few years. Um, I'm actually I'm actually reading a book right now called Falling Upwards by Richard Rohr. And one of the things he talks about in the book is the importance of elders uh, in, in your life and in a, in a group setting. And to really be an effective elder, you have to be in sort of the second phase of your life. And I think I would speak for Amir as well. Like we're in the second phase of our career. We've been through enough now and have enough wisdom uh, that we can be an effective elder. Over here. JJ, in that process, in 09, your third year, you finally kind of get to play, and it's against the Sixers. It's game six. You're thrust into action. As you recall, you had five threes, and then you go into that Boston series. As you mentioned, you guard Ray Allen. That really stoked your confidence. Talk about that, and it kind of set you in motion, if you will, as a young player. Well, I think in any career, uh, whether it's sports or you know anything else, um, to get better and to have confidence, uh, you need reference points. And so that was a huge reference point for me, those eight games um, that I got to start in the playoffs in 09. We made the finals that year. And I really felt a part of that, that team and that process. Uh, whereas the first two years, I, I really wasn't a consistent rotation player. Um, so, you know, that was huge for me. And, and the other thing, too, is just being on that team and, and being on those Orlando teams where we were really good. We had a couple years where I thought, you know, we were one of the two or three best teams in the league. Um, it really taught me the importance and the value of winning. Being around Stan for those five years uh, taught me a lot of things about professionalism. And, uh, you know, those are things that I've carried with me uh, both on the court and off the court and how I carry myself. This is for JJ and Amir also. What were your impressions of Joel Embiid in his rookie season? Um, very impressive. Um, when I guarded him, I remember guarding him in Boston, man, and uh, I didn't think he would be as strong as he was, and he hit me with the elbow, and it was, uh, it was a pretty hard one, and I, and I kind of braced myself for that. But um, definitely impressive. Uh, he played, what, 22 minutes a game, I believe, and he, he just put up incredible numbers. Um, I know he's a great guy, you know, off the court. You know, I see him, you know, all over social media. Um, seems like a, a funny guy. And um, he seems like a, definitely a hard worker, man. And I, I can't wait to, to work with him. Obviously, Joel is a, an incredible talent. Um, you know, he's a, a, another big reason why I wanted to come here and, and play with him. Um, you know, Coach Brown compared him the other night to Tim Duncan. So um, that's high praise. And, and that's... Mm -hmm somebody who's, who's won in this league, and, and Joel can be the anchor of a championship-winning team. I think the thing that maybe people don't talk about as much is, you know, when, when Joel was on the court last year, the Sixers would have had the best defensive rating in the league. So, uh, you know, to win in this league, you have to be great on defense, and, and I think with Joel as, as sort of the back line of a defense, we can do that. For both the players, uh, what have been your impressions of uh, Philadelphia coming through the league over the years, and uh, how did that, if it did at all, factor into the decisions you made? Great cheese steaks. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Philly is a, a definitely unbelievable place. Um, uh, great, great, great restaurants, great food, great atmosphere. And um, definitely always, always had love for Philly, you know, and. Um, I finally get to live here. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll definitely see more, you know, and I'm definitely excited to be here. Somebody on Twitter the other day dug up an old tweet from 2011 when I said that um, I was roaming the streets of Philadelphia and it was one of, my, one of my favorite cities and it's a very underrated city. Six years later, I still feel the same way. Uh, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite cities in the U.S. Um, 
It's got an unbelievable food scene. As a U.S. history major, there's something very cool about uh, being in cities and walking the streets of Philadelphia or Boston or New York and, and seeing historical sites. So I've always had a great appreciation for the city. Um, and, and the other thing right now is, <clears throat> and Brett texted me this other night, but like, there's a buzz in the city right now. Um, there's a buzz about the Sixers, and that's, that's really exciting. Anybody else? Again, thank you for coming and uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. All right.